Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'll be talking about uh, Puppeteer. I have been scraping websites with Puppeteer uh, a lot lately and I've been using Puppeteer quite heavily over the past year and I would like to share some tips and tricks when uh, using Puppeteer. Okay. Um, as you can see, I have a basic index.js file open and I do, I do some pretty basic stuff here. Just uh, require Puppeteer and then launch a browser, open the page and then go to a URL and then close the browser afterwards. Okay. So this is the example that, that I'm going to go off. All right. Now let's, um, let's go into the tips. So the first one is caching. Caching is pretty huge. It depends on your use case, but most of the time, if you are scraping the same website over and over again, you can benefit so much from caching, uh, save a bunch of data and gain some pretty neat performance. And the way to enable caching for Puppeteer is to um, inside our launch here for Puppeteer, we can uh, specify some different things. And one thing is uh, the use of data directory. And in here you can put a string of the path to the directory. So I could put in dot slash cache here and when my uh, browser opens and I close it again, I will store cookies, images, CSS, like stuff that I have downloaded as I've been uh, as I've been scraping during my session. And this is pretty huge. So if you um, log in, always log in. If part of your scraping uh, is to log in. It's pretty neat to have the cookies there so you don't have to do it another time. It can save you a bunch of time and uh, uh, also reduce errors. So this one is definitely recommended to do. So there's another way you can also um, save uh, some data and gain some performance and that is to um, enable request interpretation. Intercept interception sorry yeah and the way we do this is on the page um, object so after initializing page we can say page dot uh, set request interception set that one to true that uh, unlocks a um, callback so we can do page on request and then in here we have our event on request. Here we have our callback, our anonymous function here. And in here we can do stuff like blocking specific requests. So for example, we could be, we could call the URL function on this uh, request object and then say, if this one ends with dot png then request dot abort this basically ignores the request so we don't download this image down so if we are just into interested in some text and just the url of some uh, images we're not going to take any screenshots or anything this is pretty pretty neat we can save a bunch of data and uh, yeah just in case it's not a PNG image, we can do request.continue. This will allow the request to go through. There is one pretty big caveat though that I need to mention, and that is if we enable request interception, interception we uh, the caching gets disabled. So you have to choose one or the other, and um, this will uh, of course, depend on your use case, which one will gain the more, most performance. But mostly, I would say the caching is uh, the way to go, especially if you're doing login with cookies. 
and similar things. Okay, uh, the next tip I would like to give is to wrap your entire app inside um, a try catch. And there's one big reason for that, and that is even though Puppeteer works great, there's usually no problems. Um, Chromium and Puppeteer is kind of complex and advanced. There are a lot of things that can randomly go wrong. Uh, I have had a lot of, not a lot, but I have had a few issues where the page just randomly crashes. And yeah, you need to be able to kind of have a case for that in case that happens. Otherwise your scraping job might just die and you have no idea. So uh, what you should do is wrap everything in a try catch like this and then be ready to handle the error because it seems to be pretty common as far as I see, I see that this page crash error can happen and wrapping everything in try catch should deal with a problem. At least it did it for me. Some people had some problems where it didn't work out. Uh, another way to handle the error is to listen on the error event. So you can do page dot on error and then try to handle it in here. But try with the try with the try catch to begin with and see how far I get you. I definitely uh, be ready for some errors in case, especially some really random ones that only happens every so often. Okay, my next tip is uh, arguments for production. So currently if I run this program, it will work great on my machine. But when if you are hosting this scraper or this node program on a VPS, let's say a digital ocean droplet or Amazon something, something, you are gonna need to add some flags for it to work out of the box. And also some, you can also pass some uh, additional commands or arguments to improve the performance. So the one I'm rolling with is, oh, I just copy pasted in here, is the, um, is this one. So no sandbox, disable, uh, uh, set set UID sandbox, disable dev SHM usage and disable GPU. This can um, gain a lot of performance benefits and you won't your app will error out as you launch it. So keep these arcs in mind. They are on the documentation page for Puppeteer. There's a bunch more you can add in there, but these are not mandatory, at least not the two last ones here, but two first ones. I would say this is a uh, mandatory in production, almost always. And for that, you want to have a conditional here. So broad, use this, otherwise uh, you might want to try with some something else, something like this. Um, but uh, yeah, just, uh, just a tip. It might not uh, be needed for you, your use case, but just keep it in mind. All right, the last thing I want to share with you guys is the, um, the option to add a proxy. So if you want to add a proxy to in front of your puppeteer for some reason, uh, you can also use the arcs here uh, by passing in uh, dash dash proxy server and then the server address here, okay? And most proxy servers are protected behind a username password. And how to deal with that is uh, you uh, when you launch a page here, so new page, you can do page, uh, uh, wait, sorry, page dot authenticate. And then inside here, you can put your username password. Like this, that should deal with uh, the prompt that will appear when enabling the proxy server. Okay, 
that was the tips I want to show you guys for today. I hope uh, you learned something and uh, yeah, good luck in your web scraping adventures with Puppeteer and see you in the next one.